What's going on, First Contingent fans? We got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to talk a little WNBA, Lance Armstrong's fall, and the legacy of our man Tracy McGrady in the NBA. Tune in and stay locked. It's First Contingent. Let's get this party started. Coverage tight, spotlight on tomorrow. Who you with? Trust, you'll be delighted that you followed. At first contention, the invention. We debate sports, of course we should mention. What's that? We cover games, we don't play suspensions. We 100, so if your star's missing, we let you know your squad surely gone fishing. We never fish though, no, not our motto. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get right to it. I am the host today, Mr. Stephen Davis, here with my colleagues, Mr. Marvin Banks. No gangum style today. We throwing it back. Hola, seniors and senoritas. Right, right, right. Mr. Josh Harris out here in Baltimore. What's going on, First Contention fans? And last but not least, Mr. Ty Sosina. Salutations. Josh, are you going to keep that headset for the rest of the season, or what's going on? This is how my producers talk to me. <laughs> Got you. All right, let's get it right, right, right down to it. Our first topic of the day is uh, the WNBA. We're going to start talking about some women basketball. The uh, Indiana Fever beat the Minnesota Lynx in uh, four games in the, in the, in the five-game series. Uh, Tamika Ketchins finally got her first championship. And, you know, just want to get you guys' reflection on, you know, her finally esteeming that championship and getting past that level. Josh, how, how do you feel about that? And after Indiana Fever... F to make catches, links forever. No, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, I, the series, I can't say that it was a great series. The links kind of flopped out in two games. But game four was a heck of a game. They left it all out on the floor. Tamika Catchings, three gold, three gold medals, the NCAA championship at Tennessee back in 98. Finally gets a WNBA championship. No one else could deserve it better. They did a great job. And they did it all without their second leading scorer, Katie Douglas, who was hurt. Um, they came together as a team, and they did exactly what you need to do to beat the Lynx. They locked up Simone Augustus. She only has seven points, and when you do that, it's a wrap. Yeah, they locked her down. Marv, what do you got to say? Well, I think this is probably one of the bigger upsets within uh, WNBA and within sports playoffs history. I think this upset has to go back to – uh, use a football when the Patriots beat the Rams with Kurt Warner playing on that team. Um, shout outs to uh, Miss Kitchens finally getting her first ring. Uh, use another analogy, it's like Peyton Manning finally getting his first ring back in the Colts back in 2006. Tamika Kitchens has been one of the uh, mainstays within the NBA, uh, excuse me, WNBA. So it's finally nice to see her finally win a ring. But you can't say that this championship was for the Lynx to win with superstars like Maya. Uh, Simone, uh, Lindsey Whalen, uh, uh, Mama Taj, as people like to call her, this was their championship to win, and they let that slip through their hands. Yeah, no doubt. Minnesota Lynx was a very stacked team, but to me, Captain showed them up. Ty, what do you got to say? I mean, I don't know what I can say that you two haven't already touched on. Um, if I could just continue on with the analogies that Marv threw out there, you know, it's, it's to echo the same sentiment that LeBron James had when he finally got a ring. It's about damn time. We're talking about wow. a team, the Indiana Fever, that has a nucleus of really good, skilled players. And so it's good that finally, you know, after all the playoff games that they've played, that they're finally able to get the ring. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great because, you know, the Lynx were favored by a lot. I mean, at the beginning of the season, I was like, what's the point? You know, the Lynx are going to win. So it's great that, you know, things can't always go the way you think they will. Otherwise, it takes away from the surprise of the season. So, Good for the Fever, first first uh, championship franchise. What I will say is it's awesome for Indiana because it's the first time since in 39 years, I believe, since the state of Indiana has had a bas professional basketball champion. And if you've been to Indiana, you know they love some basketball. Reggie Miller didn't do it. Um, what's his name didn't do it? That's it. That's just – Reggie what's Miller Larry didn't Bird? do it. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. <laughs> he was the owner. He was the owner or coach. So, 
Yeah, it's been a while. Long time coming. Yeah, no doubt. Shout out to Tamika Catches for getting that first championship. Been a great summer for her. Got the gold medal. So I, I bet things are going good for Indiana right now. Hopefully, yeah, Aaron Phillips had a heck of a game. Team. Yeah, hopefully the men's basketball team can pick up from uh, what they see there. But let's move on to our next topic. Um, as we know, Mr. Lance Armstrong was put into the situation with his steroids, and he's he's lost his he's been stripped of his seven Tour de France titles, and also he's lost plenty of his endorsement deals, including Nike, Anheuser Busch, and what we all know of Livestrong. Now. This just seems like maybe one of the biggest falls that athletes has ever had. But the question I want to ask you guys is, do you think it's warranted? Is is this something that should have happened, or is, is this something that was kind of over the top? Mark, what do you got to say? Well, Cornelius, I think you're dealing with a double-edged sword here because on one hand, you're dealing with someone that uh, cheated the sport of cycling in a sport where everyone is – um, known for cheating, uh, Floyd Landis comes to mind as one of uh, another cheater that was recently caught. But on the other side, you have a man that beat cancer and won seven Tour de France's. So, looking at the double edged sword, do you judge the man that uh, continued to cheat in a sport that everyone cheated, or do you judge the man that beat cancer to win the Tour de France? So, in that section, um, I would have to ride the fence and say, I don't know. Um, it's a hard, it's a hard decision to make. On one side, uh, I say he's wrong for that, but on the other side, uh, he inspires so many people. And F inspiration. Oh, wow. Okay, Josh, what do you got to say? And take all his accolades away. If he cheated, he cheated. I don't care if everybody else cheat. Two wrongs don't make a right. You just don't do it. That's how sports become corrupted. Just because everybody else is doing it, don't mean you should. Take it all. I'm going to echo the sentiments of my man Dennis Miller from Fox News. He says, I don't really care that he did steroids, but to talk bad about the dudes who you've been kicking their ass and all those Tour de France's, to talk down upon those minions, that's just a terrible, long-lasting legacy. What does that wow. mean? I don't know. I have no clue what that means, but that's what Dennis Miller says. Wow. Right. Okay. So just forget all of them now. They, they all took steroids, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> okay, Ty, what do you guys say? When you think about it, you already touched on the fact that everyone's cheating. So if this man beat cancer, it, can't you just kind of let him cheat a little bit? Because, you know, he just got, you know, all the radio, the chemotherapy. So, I mean, give him a little something, something to help him boost him that no one else really needs. It's not his fault that he did it better than everybody else. But most well, importantly, know. what he's mm -hmm. done for cancer in terms of research and the money that he's brought in and, and the people and lives that he's impacted, it, it's so much more important than, than uh, him failing these drug tests. Man. So just give him just, the awards because he had cancer. You gonna give him your wallet while you at it? Come on. So I mean, he just to echo the voices of someone, someone off of ESPN, Colin Coher, when he said, "Yeah, right, you're a cheater. You're a bad guy. You can never come into the building." Hey, everyone leaves at four thirty. You can always come back into the building. You're Lance Armstrong. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's how I really feel about it. I mean, yeah, you know, you got Lance Armstrong. He he stood for so much more than just winning races oh, on the Tour de And I don't necessarily believe that can all be taken away, even if they take away the, the money from it. But, you know, the, the legacy of what he stood for, I, I still still believe will be there, you know, for future reference for people to look at, but and I want a refund on my live strong rubber band. Oh, oh, my man. <laughs> this boy, discount double check. All right, moving that along. Going to a good purpose, jerk. <laughs> so now we, we're going to talk a little uh, NBA, and as you know, Mr. Tracy McGrady, he is taking his talents overseas to China. Was he still in the NBA? <laughs> Don't Joshua. Do not Harris, don't be disrespectful to one of the all-time greats. Right, don't right, you right. do it. Tracy McGrady, you know, he's been, he was, you know, had many highs in the NBAs and towards towards the end of his career has kind of, you know, fallen off a little bit. But, you know, for a lot of his fans, you can always say he was an exciting player to watch. So the question I want to ask you guys is, is, is what is the legacy that he's going to leave in the NBA? 
Ty, what do you have to say? Man, you're talking about legacy. You you got to go to what he did in, in, what was it, 35 seconds? 16 points in 35 seconds? 13. That was ridiculous. Who does that? Thank you. Whatever 13. you said. That, that's unbelievable. So we're talking about a man, yeah, he never really did too much in the playoffs, but he was number one literally on the courts and number one in our hearts, you know, straight out of college. Mount Zion, or high school in my son, Mount Zion. It's, it's going to be sad to see him go. I enjoyed watching him play. It's unfortunate, but he just couldn't stay healthy. Yeah, yeah he couldn't stay healthy because he was sitting next to Steve Friends and they were both getting fat and out of shape. <laughs> well, okay, and he sat next to Yao Ming as well. Go ahead, Josh. You finish your sitting. No, I'm just joking around. No, honestly, though, T Mac, uh, he, him and Vince Carter used to go at it back in the day. Um, I'll forever remember the, the T-Max shoe commercial where he did the reverse duck where he grabbed the rim on the other side and then came the other side to duck it around. He had some great games, 13 points in 30 seconds. He did his thing. I'm not sure that he will go down in history as one of the greats. He'll be remembered as a, a, a showtime player in his prime, but not much more than that. Okay. Yeah, he, he definitely was a flashy player. He, he had, like I said, many highs, but didn't get that elusive championship. But, uh, Mar, what do you have to say? I would just like to say the level of disrespect for Tracy McGrady is at an all-time high. At one point in time, people were comparing T-Mac to his – uh, as Kobe's rival. That's, uh, that's when, the only thing compared, concerning Tracy McGrady. Excuse me, Josh. Excuse me, Joshua Harris. No one interrupts you from your uh, soliloquies and all these blasphemous statements that you're yelling over here. So let me continue saying my statements. As I was saying, um, T Mac will I, undoubtedly go down as one of the probably unfortunate superstars in Orlando. He never had that second running mate. Uh, Grant Hill never recovered off his ankle injuries. Tim Duncan never came over to San Antonio to Orlando. So Time's up. I think T Mac will still go down as one of the best players in NBA. I would put him as a top 50 uh, all time NBA player. I will have to put T Mac as a top 50 all time NBA player. So who's number 49? Um, it definitely wouldn't be Josh Harris. So, um, <laughs> That's supposed to be. Who's number 40? T Mac top 50? T Mac top 50. Of all hey, time. The man is entitled time. to his own opinion. Oh my gosh. You, Are you, you drunk? T Mac was an elusive yeah. scorer. And, and if you look at some of the top oh, players in the league, we had a lot of scores. We had a lot of all around players. In How many times was he league MVP? Zero. How many um, times was Dominique Wilkins league MVP? MVP? Um, how many times did Dominique Wilkins make it out of the first round of the playoffs? Oh. How many times did he get out the second round? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. For how many championships does Dominique have? Oh, I mean, Josh, we could we could do this all day, Josh. Oh, I, mean, gosh, I also go. don't consider Dominique Wilkins a top fifty all time player, but okay. Well, wait well, a second. Oh, Thank you, gentlemen. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for no, your, you your comment. No, you didn't. Anyway. I, I guess the headphones is blocking his thoughts too. Sorry. I guess that's what he's doing. We're, we're gonna we're gonna let Marv get back to drinking. It is Thirsty Thursday, so Steve, go ahead and wrap the show up. Yes. So uh, thank you guys for your comments. NBA talking about Tracy McGrady, but we thank you all for tuning in and listening and watching. Make sure you continue to watch us and follow us on First Contention at Twitter. Also, we're on Facebook. You can check us out on Facebook as well at First, First Contention. But that is all that we have for today. We will continue to talk about our football, and we're going to continue to bring some more topics to spark your interest, to keep you up on debates by your average people, for the fans, by the fans. I'm Stephen Davis, signing off for Josh Harris, Marvin Banks, and Pai Sosina. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the Minnesota Lynx. Ride with first contention, that's full throttle in. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. Game face grit.
it like born for playoffs. Say it all in small time like payoffs.